Hi guys, welcome back to my channel where we talk about everything from tech to films and all the fun stuff in between. In today's video, let me show you some hidden tricks and trips which you can do with your iPad. I'm using the iPad Air 3, but you can use this on any device which supports iPad OS or iOS 13. First up is with the photos. You know, with the iPad, when you save something to your pictures, to your photos or your camera roll, you cannot actually see what the size of the image is or rename it or any of that stuff. Now, all that changes with the Files app. Let me go and find an image which I can save. So I would, I'll use that view gallery and then I'll choose this image. So if you just press and hold and then you get the options. So don't do add to photos, but select copy instead. So that copies the image. Now go back to the files folder and just pick any folder in the in your files app and then just press and hold you get the paste option and you paste it the image is there straight away you can see what the image name is you can see the size of the image and when it is saved this is quite helpful really because on photos it doesn't show you all that so let me try and save another image here so i'll save that press and hold copy go back to files app tap and hold and then paste so there you go the image is straight away there now you can just tap that and then you get the file name you can change that to anything you want so i'll just have 2020 and then i'll put hyphen gold and then the same goes with the other image let's try that so just tap go back and then yeah you know, i'll put a hyphen and that is silver so it's also easy just to change the file name and all that. It immensely helps actually, especially when I was trying to film that uh, iPad Air challenge, which is coming soon, where I try to do work related stuff on the iPad, just on the iPad. I've come across all these tiny bits of, you know, hidden features and tricks, and they really helped, especially when I was filming that video. So please stay subscribed guys, because that is coming next. And you can check it out as soon as it's live on my channel. Next is another key feature which we use on Windows laptop almost regularly, which is the ability to zip files. So you can do that with the Files app. So I've selected these three images and hit on more and then you have the option called Compress. When you do that, it creates a zip file and names it as Archive. Obviously, you can just tap and rename that to whatever you want. I'll just call Archive-MacBooks and then that's it. So you've done and you've saved. So it's quite simple and the Files app really opens this up, making you to create zip files as and when you want. So it's just select the files, more, and then compress. So you can pretty much select any type of file. It doesn't have to be an image file. I, like in this one, I've selected an MP3 file as well. And that will create the zip file. I mean, you tap, actually, that's how you unzip the file. So it um, creates a folder and it unzips it where you can view the contents of any zip file. So super useful. Nice little feature there. Next is another Windows-esque feature, which I almost use every day on my Windows laptop, which is the ability to drag and drop. Now let's try and open the multitasking here. Uh, let me get email up. So I'll put it side by side. And now you can see you can just drag and drop directly into your message. So that's super convenient. It can be anything. You can even drag and drop the zip file. So there you go. That's attached to your email. Same as Windows. So that's a super cool and easy way to use drag and drop on the iPad. Now I'll try to show you that you can drag and drop it into anything actually in there. So I've got a notepad here. So let me do a new notepad. Now uh, let's get the notepad into the side view again here. So side by side. And you can just simply drag and drop it into the notepad. So there you go. And then, yeah, you can type and use the notepad as normal, uh, which now it's like a rich format notepad which has got text as well as images 
Next, let me show you how to drag and drop into two instances of the same app. So I've got the same files app open here twice, side by side. I'll just uh, tap and hold and create a new folder. So you can just rename the folder here. I'll call it new. Then you tap and then from the same files app, you can just move files around. So there you go. I've, I've taken a file then from my media folder and put it into the new folder. So super easy, just like how you do on Windows. You can just drag and drop to your heart's content. Next, I'll show you a few options with the download manager. So you know that we've got download manager on uh, Safari. So let me just go to royalty free music here and uh, let me choose Ben Sound. They've got a decent selection of royalty free music, which you can use. So I'll hit the download button and uh, yeah, you can, yeah, I'll just do the free license with attribution option and then hit download. So you can see on Safari, there's the download manager, which shows you where it's been downloaded. And then, yeah, the file is downloaded into your cloud drive by default. But you can actually change the location of where these default downloads go. Same as how you do on Chrome browser on your Windows laptop. You have this option on Safari as well. To do this, you go into settings and click on Safari. And then you choose the downloads where it's set to Cloud Drive. Now I can choose anything. So I can, I'll can i probably choose my the new folder on my iPad location. And I'll choose new, which, I, which we recently created. So done. And there you go. So now all my downloads will go into that new folder. Let's go back to Ben Sound. Take another one here. Tap download and then yeah, download. So now if you see the file has been downloaded and if I go to my files app, so I go to my files app, you can see that it's been downloaded into the new folder. There you are, Ben Sound tenderness. And yes, the files app now supports most formats. So you can play that directly on the files app. Next is another cool feature actually. In Windows, you need a third party app in order to do that. But here on iPad OS, it works right out of the box. So first let me open a web page. I need a lengthy web page. So I'm going to go to this Jessica Alba's Wikipedia page. So there's a it's a lengthy page, you can scroll. Um, so in order to take a screenshot, you just hit the power button and the home button at the same time. So you've got the screenshot. But the additional option is that you can actually, that screenshot takes the screenshot of the whole page. So you can now choose that option on the top and this saves the entire page as a screenshot. Super handy really. and. You can obviously you can do markups on it so you can just use the pen tool and yeah you can just mark up whatever and then when you hit done you get the option to save it as a pdf to the files so you will again use that new folder which we have created and it's all saved so if you go to the folders now you should be able to see the screenshot which is of the entire page not just the view but it's the screenshot of the entire page saved as a PDF. Super useful. I wish so many times I wanted this on Windows because, you know, initially we used to take screenshots of the top and the bottom and stitch them together using Firefox or Photoshop. But this is really a super handy option. Next, let me show you another cool option. Control F on Windows, which we use it all the time to find words and keywords on a particular page. On iOS also, I found this super helpful. So let me open another lengthy page. We'll get Anne Hathaway this time. And as you can see, lots of words on a single page. Now, if I want to find a particular page, this is what you do. You hit on the share icon, and then you have this option called find on page. When you do that, you just get that same kind of control F window, which you get on Windows. And then you can just uh, type in let me type in Dark Knight. Uh, let me spell it right. So there you go. So there are 12 occurrences of Dark Knight on that page. And yeah, just tapping on the arrow, you can just go up and down. Let me try another one. Bride Wars. So there are three instances of that on the page. And you can find that. 
so you can type in anything and you can try and search it that way control f is such a useful feature which i always use on windows and it's super convenient and easy to use it on the ipad as well and if you hit the return key there it uh, slides down to the bottom giving you more view and getting that keyboard out of the way so you can browse through all the occurrences of the word and find that necessary paragraph on your page. Next, I'll show you how you can customize that a reader view per individual tab. Yeah, so now you can actually customize it per tab, which is open on Safari. So all you have to do is hit on that A and then choose show reader view. The reader view usually gets rid of all the clutter and gives you a nice view just to read and focus on your text. But once the reader view is selected, if you tap on that A again, you get this various options. So you can actually change the background of that page into all these colors. So you've got the white, you've got gray, black, and then you can also change the font. So this is super cool. So this is the actual Wikipedia page. You've changed the background and you can now choose a different font, whatever pleases your eye so that it makes reading very easy. I really find this super convenient and it is a really good feature to have, especially on websites or pages like this, where there's lots of content and lots of ads and everything floating around and it makes it difficult to read. Whereas if you do that and then select the reader view, it kind of organizes it into a really nice view where it makes reading easy. Now the good thing is you can actually set different preferences for each tab. Like if you can see the Jessica Alba page has got that sepia tone with a different font and the Anne Hathaway's page has got a different font. So you can customize it per tab and then your preferences are saved on that tab until you come back and hide that off. Super helpful feature here guys, especially if you want to focus on reading, this is going to help you a lot. Next is another cool accessibility feature, which is kind of hidden. Now you can go into settings and choose accessibility. And then from there, if you choose spoken content, so you see the menu spoken content, you just tap on that and choose speak selection. What this does is you can go to any text, select it, and you get this option. Now you get a new option called speak in there. And if you do that, the iPad will read out. Hi guys, thanks for watching my video. Please subscribe and support my channel so I can continue making fun content for you. Going back to the settings, you can adjust the speaking rate so you can make it really faster or you can make it slower and then go back to your text. All you do and need to do is select it all and then you get that new speak option in there. Not just on WordPad, it will work anywhere. So if I take that, if I take a web page now and uh, let me try and select some text here. So there you go, I selected all that and I got the speak option now. And then the, big screen breakthrough came the in iPad reads out to you. It's a super handy feature, especially for elders who don't wanna read. Or if you're tired with reading a long article, you can just do that and ask the iPad to read back to you. It almost works like audiobooks. I found it super convenient when I was reading a lengthy article. At a certain point, I just wanted to take a pause and then I thought, yeah, let me use this option and it just reads it back to you. The voice is slightly robotic. It's not as smooth as Siri. Wish they could enable Siri here so that, you know, it's Siri would talk to you instead of this uh, robotic human talking back. But still, nonetheless, it's quite neat and handy feature and it works. You just have to get past that robotic pronunciation and then just enjoy the article which it's reading back to you. Now this next one is mouse pointer related or even trackpad actually. So you know that the iPad OS obviously opened this all up so you can now connect a mouse or a trackpad and use it that way. Now by default, this is how it works. So every time you hover over a menu item, the mouse pointer morphs itself into the shape of that icon. 
So if you see, if I put it over the share, it kind of highlights and it disappears and it morphs into the shape of the icon. It does it on all the menu items which you can click. So look at that thumbs up and thumbs, up, thumbs down. The next arrow, back arrow, all these, it just shape shifts. It happens everywhere else, actually, not just that. So if you can see on Safari, look at that. The mouse pointer has become into the cross by just highlighting it or the refresh sign or the downloads. You get the picture. Now, if you find this confusing and if you don't want this, you can actually go into the settings and turn it off. So let's do that. So I click on settings. All you have to do is go to accessibility and then choose pointer control from the menu. So here you just turn off that pointer animations option. And what happens is the pointer stays in the shape of pointer no matter where you go. So you can keep a track of where it is and it doesn't kind of get disappeared into the shape shifting animations, which it was doing earlier. Um, it might be helpful because if you are used to Windows, you know, Windows cursor, it usually stays a pointer on most of them unless it's a link. So you get that similar kind of a feel here. It still kind of highlights on the option where you go. So you know what you're clicking. But yes, it won't shape shift and it'll stay as that round puck. Using that same settings section also, you can adjust the scrolling speed of that pointer or even adjust the size of that puck. So you can make it smaller or you can make it really big. I mean, it looks crazy making it so big. I don't know if, what you can do with it. But yeah, it is there. That option is there. So there you go, guys. That's a few hidden tricks and tips which I found when I was trying to edit that iPad Air work challenge, which will soon be up. So please comment down below and let me know your thoughts on this video. Please drop a like if you like this video and please do subscribe to my channel, guys, so I can continue making videos like this for you. And as always, thanks a lot for staying with me until the end. I will see you in my next video. Bye for now.